I can prove that the King James Bible is not God's perfect word because of Acts chapter 12, verse 4. The King James translators incorrectly said Easter when it should have been Passover. Mm. Right? Mm, no. I don't think so. Um, anybody that says that they can reject this whole Bible because of that one supposed mistranslation, uh, that's really grasping at some straws. Okay, you have to be quite ignorant, very ignorant to come up with that. Let's look at the text here. Acts chapter 12, we'll begin in verse 1. Now about that time Herod the king stretched forth his hands to vex certain of the church, and he killed James the brother of John with the sword, and because he saw it pleased the Jews, he proceeded further to take Peter also. Then were the days of unleavened bread. And when he had apprehended him, he put him in prison and de delivered him to four quaternions of soldiers to keep him, intending after Easter to bring him forth to the people. Well, they say, well, see, the Greek word there, if you look at the text, it's Pascha. P-A-S-C-H-A. Pascha always is translated as Passover. Every single time it's supposed to be translated as Passover, never as Easter. So the King James translators, they came in and they put a false translation in of Easter. Therefore, the King James Bible is not God's word, and therefore you can reject it and use whatever version you prefer and refer to Greek and Hebrew, and you get to be God and just say that God's word is basically what comes out of your mind and out of your mouth. <clears throat> That's the truth of it. Um, no, it doesn't work that way. First and foremost, proof number one that the word should be translated as Easter. Um, verse 3, then were the days of unleavened bread. Now, if you look at the Passover celebration, the days of unleavened bread come after the actual Passover. So, then were the days of unleavened bread. Herod says, after Easter, I'm going to bring Peter forth. Now, that either means that he's talking about something different than Passover, or that means he's going to wait till the next year. <laughs> Okay, uh, no. Then were the days of unleavened bread, and, and Herod says, I'm going to wait till, you know, the Passover. Well, the Passover is already gone. So I have to wait for another year. No, it doesn't work that way. Um, Easter, uh, argument number one. And this, a lot of this stuff is already known, but I'm going to, going to give you another reason here that most people don't talk about, why Easter is the, the perfect translation. Point number two, was Herod a Jew? No. Herod was a pagan. Herod would have been celebrating Easter, or the ancient festival of Ishtar, or Astarte, whatever you want to call it. Easter is the right word there. I mean, if you said Ishtar or whatever else now, well, you know, huh, what's that mean? You know? So, Easter is the right word. More on that in just a couple minutes here. There's another good proof for it being the right word. Um, and they say, well, Josephus said that Herod uh, actually was trying to convert to the Jews' religion and whatever else uh, and things. Uh, well, then you're relying on the words of a man and not on the words of God. Now, Easter is the right translation. Point number three, the Greek word Pascha is used by Greek Orthodox people for Easter. He said, I don't believe you. I was hoping you'd say that. Let me show you some pictures. Here we have our journey to Pascha of, in 2022. And there you have all the different things. You get down through there. And um, Great and Holy Friday. And then you have the one down there at the bottom. Okay. Holy Pascha, April 24th. That's talking about Easter. It's not talking about the Passover. All right. Let me show you another one. PRMA Consulting, Kalo Pascha, I guess is how you say that in Greek, or however that would be. And what does it mean? Happy Orthodox Easter. Pascha is used for Easter in the Greek Orthodox system. Here you have Road to Pascha. All right? Starts up there. It's Sunday, the resurrection of Christ. Easter, it's what it's talking about. <clears throat> but it's called the Road to Pascha. Huh. Orthodox Easter 2023, April 16th, 2023. But look what it says here. Same website. Pascha 2023, April 16th, 2023. Pascha is Easter in the Greek Orthodox system. Celebrating Pascha, Greek Orthodox Easter traditions. 
Well, Pascha always has to mean Passover. No, it doesn't. No, it doesn't. Again, see that the the people that are anti King James, the Alexandrian type of philosophers, the the scribes that are constantly trying to throw doubt on the King James Bible and basically on everything else too, because they'll correct everything. The Word of God, the Holy Word of God, is what's up here in their mind. It's what they make up themselves. They are their own gods, in other words. They will only tell you partial truths. They'll just say that Pascha always has to be translated the same way. No, it doesn't. If you study languages, you'll understand that there are certain words that can be translated different ways depending on the context in which it appears. And the correct context for Pascha in this passage is Easter. Other places in the King James Bible, yeah, Pascha would be translated as Passover. But here in this passage, it's Easter. Okay, I'll give you a good example. Post. Well, what does post mean? Well, it means a four by four post that you put in the ground and you attach your mailbox to it or something else. Well, it can mean that. How about post? Soldier's supposed to stay at his post out there keeping guard. That's a post. What if you take a, there's a bulletin board, community bulletin board, and you go over and you post something. Put a notice on there and you put a pin on it. You just posted it. You see? One word can be translated in different ways. It depends on the context. Pascha can be translated as Passover or Easter. So somebody says uniform translation, they're lying to you. They're lying right to your face. Anybody tries to tell you that, they're either very ignorant or they're a liar. There's no other way around that. So if somebody comes up with the Acts 12, 4 thing, send them to this video. And if you believe in that, you're still holding on to that, you're still per perpetuating a lie about this King James Bible, about God's holy word, his perfect word, um, you're going to be in trouble. You need to get saved. All right. Point number four, the word Easter. Let's just say for a minute, let's go with the nutty, you know, scribe argument here that the word Easter is a mistranslation. Okay. Um, how is that going to lead somebody into doctrinal error? Why would you even bring that up? See, what it was is some desperate little servant of the, of the devil came along and said, I have to find some way to tear down the authority of the King James Bible. What can I do? Oh, oh yes. I'll say Easter is a mistranslation. Oh, yes. And then they'll believe in me rather than the King James Bible. Okay, little devil. Um, what a stupid, quote-unquote, error. It's not even an error. I've demonstrated that already. What a stupid thing to bring up. People are so desperate to tear down the authority of this book. But I wanted to give you... The fifth and biggest reason why the new versions have all taken the word Easter out of Acts 12.4 and they replace it with Passover. There's a certain church that's behind the new versions. Hmm. I wonder what that church could be. And this certain church, uh, they have a big thing about Easter. It's very important to them. And so they wouldn't want it being connected with a pagan king that would be putting to death the very first pope. They wouldn't want that. Because, see, the certain pagan church still likes their pagan ceremony where, where they worship the Queen of Heaven, um, Astarte, one of her names, one of her many names. Um, they wouldn't want that pagan ceremony uh, being connected in a, in, with a negative connotation in their Bibles. So we'll just remove that. So what's that pagan church? I have no idea what that pagan church would be. I just can't think of it. Catechism of the Catholic Church, page 331, number 1169. Therefore, it's talking about the liturgical year here. Therefore, Easter is not simply one feast among others, but the feast of feasts, the solemnity of solemnities, just as the Eucharist is the sacrament of sacraments, the great sacrament. St. Athanasius calls Easter the great Sunday, and the Eastern churches call Holy Week the great week. The mystery of the resurrection in which Christ crushed death permeates with its powerful energy our old time until all is subjected to him. And when they say subjected to him, they're talking about the Pope, basically, when they say about Christ. Um, that's their doctrinal stand, vicarious Philly D. You know, um, yeah, the Holy Father. That's God's title. So all is subjected to him. They mean all subjected to the Pope is what these Satanists believe. But right there you have it.
Let me zoom in here so you can read it. Down there in the yellow. And up there. Okay. So uh, why would the new versions feel such a need to get that nasty word Easter out of there and call it a mistranslation? Because they don't want some pagan king celebrating Easter. Because then somebody might actually be tempted to make the tie-in that perhaps that pagan king went down through a, uh, a long line of pagans and things, particularly the Roman Caesars, and then there's Pontificus Maximus became the supreme pontiff. And that Roman Empire never went away. It morphed and became the Roman Catholic Church. See, the Fifth Kingdom came in, part iron, part miry clay. It went from the legs of iron, the eastern and the western divisions of Rome, the two legs, to the ten toes, part, part weak, part strong. Hmm, yeah. And um, they still celebrate Easter. It's their holiest feast day in the Catholic Church. Hmm. And you see if uh, the Lord said, I'm going to write it in my word and condemn Easter. I mean, if you want a condemnation of a holiday, there you go. Uh, there's no Christmas mentioned. There's no uh, 4th of July or Valentine's Day or whatever else or, you know, Thanksgiving or Halloween or what Easter is mentioned. And it's mentioned for a reason because it's the holiest day within the Catholic Church's system. Just showed you the proof. So um, that'll do it for this video. Um, Acts chapter 12, verse 4, the perfect translation is in God's perfect word, this King James Bible. Read it, live by it, and see what it does in your life. See, you can debate the arguments back and forth in the, well, this text says, well, this manuscript, well, this variant reading, well, this, I think that if you would, you know, interpret the Greek words, you can do that, or you can just say, you know what, this is God's book, and I'm going to live by it. Let me see what happens if I live by this book and do what it says. Rightly divide it and say, okay, that's for me in the church age here. I'm going to try to do that. I'm going to live according to this, this book here. I'm going to understand this book, and I'm going to have the Holy Spirit that inspired this blessed book tell me what to do with my life. If there's something in here that's condemned in my life, then I'm going to stop doing it to the best of my ability with the Lord's help and see what happens. Okay? It's just that simple. You don't want to live by the book? Then go about and live however you want by your own devices and your own special versions and your own intellect. See where it gets you. That's going to be it. Thank you for watching.